they're very dark-minded men, very selfish, and uh, they're not they're not looking out for our well-being and welfare as uh, they may suppose that that they that they that, or they say they are. But uh, I wanted to get back to one thing. To just I hate to jump like this, but you That's asked okay. me about the word B I B L E. Yes. The word B-I-B-L-E is another word that's not in the scriptures. It's only on the covers. And this word actually comes from a Greek uh, deity that was naming a city that's in the land of Israel that's, that was uh, predominantly where a temple was under the name of the deity that was named B-Y-B-L-O-S. And this uh, deity's temple was in this city. And that city's primary um, in out output was papyrus scrolls. Now, the city produced the scrolls, or the paper, the parchments, and the city became known by the name of the deity that was in the city, and by uh, obfuscation and, and, uh, and, and of course, arrangement, this, this deity's name is now emblazoned upon the cover, or the spine, of many translations today. Because I noticed you have kind of done away with the word Bible, and you've put together, what, the scriptures? The scriptures is a, a word that uh, better probably, uh, you know, expresses it, because actually uh, the the real, I've been asking myself, what does the, what do the scriptures or the, the revealed word of Yahuwah call itself? What does it call itself? Well, Yahushua referred to it once uh, as the Tanakh, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, which is a Tanakh is a, uh, an acronym where the T stands for Torah and the N stands for Nabiim and the K or KH stands, stands for Kathubim, which means writings. Uh, he referred to it as the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. Uh, and I think that would be a safe bet. And then, of course, there's other places where the writings themselves are also called a message, and in the Hebrew it's called besora. The besora is a, a good, clean word, too. But I wouldn't want to call it uh, B-I-B-L-E, because that would be the name of a pagan deity, because of the fact that the city was the, producing this parchment, and the parchment was called by that name. And, of course, the, it, it came straight from this pagan deity. This is a whole reconstruction of a lot of what people have been trained and indoctrinated to think and believe. It's and yeah. The whole of what you're describing and articulating, even the etymology is different. And explain yeah. etymology to the public, because you're really into that. Well, etymology is the study, that's what ology means, a study of well, etumo, which which is the truth. Uh, etymology means literally the study of the true word. In other words, if you have a word and you want to find out what the etymology of that word is, you can find out what it means, where it came from, and what the reasoning behind its creation was. Um, How did you get into that? Because it seems like it's the strongest discipline in your whole book. It's well, like a very it, strong discipline of yours. It, it, it does run as a foundation for my initial studies, uh, being uh, exposed to science first, science, uh, the study of science. I was uh, kind of disgusted with all these pagan names because when you look at stars in the sky, a lot of them are named after pagan deities and the planets that we have in our solar system, the names of the days of the week. This was a pretty disgusting thing and foul to my mind when I started to realize how pagan and how much witchcraft was involved in our everyday speech. So I said, well, I've got to find out what the origins of these things are in order to help lift people out of this sewer that we are surrounded by, you know, because we're living in a sewer of horrible terminology. And, of course, people can get upset and say, well, it doesn't mean that to me. I hear that a lot, but, and I'm not criticizing them personally. I'm just pointing it out to them and letting them see it from Yahuwah's point of view. See, because that's what was given to me. It was not so much my point of view that mattered, because when you look at it from the mindset or the perspective of the flesh, nothing is wrong. 
But when you look at it from the one that created the world, when you look at it from his perspective, then if you saw all your children running around saying that the fifth day of the week is some thunder idol's day, then that's not good. You know, it, it breaks your heart. You want to lift them out of the ignorance and say it isn't the thunder idol's day. It's it's not any. It's just the fifth day. What are you doing? <laughs> and um, the Sunday and the Monday, you know, the moon day, you know, that, see, that's just not right. It isn't supposed to be like that. I don't, I don't think the average person, it's almost unconscious. I don't even know if kids are taught how the days of the week were truly formed. Well, you know, I've, I have the, uh, the opportunity to see people in person quite a bit. And uh, sometimes I'll say, you know, it doesn't mean what it means. And they say, excuse me? What do you mean? <laughs> well, let, let me explain myself. What does the word December mean? And they don't know. They have a blank stare. And I, and I tell them, it's the 12th month of the year according to the Roman calendar, which is actually an artificial man-made calendar. And it means 10. And November means 9. And October means 8. September means 7. And I say it doesn't mean what it means. Because September doesn't mean seven anymore, does it? I mean, really. And yet it does mean seven. And so, anyway, it, it, what's really interesting, though, is the Hebrew calendar, the real moons, the months, the moons, are actually more accurate because when it is September, it really is the seventh moon. And when it is the November, well, you know, within, if you can find the new moon, of course, you have to, <laughs> the real moon tells you when the, the first day of the moon is. So when you're looking at the moon, you really are m more accurate about what moon it is or month. And uh, But when it is September, the majority of the month of the Roman September does occur in the seventh moon. So we're uh, in a Gregorian calendar now. Well, we... Or Julian calendar started we Operate off. in that, yeah. Gregory the Thirteenth modified it by about 10 days in 1582. But it is the same calendar designed by Sisygenes in 46 B.C., basically, except for those 10 days. Uh, Sisygenes under the authority of Julius Caesar. Of course, that's why it's called the Julian calendar. Um, but it is artificial. It doesn't really hang on anything. It ignores the real moon. And so when, it's a, mo when, a, new, when a new month occurs, it's just, they're just making it up. And there were originally only ten months. That's why December is the tenth month, and then it then it they cycle over, and uh, that's why the in forty six BCE. That's why uh, Julius Caesar had this astrologer uh, create a, a better calendar, and he added two months or two moons. Uh, the first two moons that we uh, are familiar with, uh, named one is named after the deity of doors and arches and locks. J-A-N-U-S. And then uh, the second month is named after a fertility deity. Um, anyway, see, these things uh, may not, ex they, they don't seem to affect the mind of the flesh, uh, the, the being, uh, the, because people just don't care. And, but when you start saying to yourself, well, I, I know that I want to know the heart of the Father. I want to know what my, my Father in, in heaven wants, what he feels. And then when you realize and he will give you his heart. You will be absolutely devastated and heartbroken over having offended him with all of this horrible garbage. It's witchcraft. It's plain and simple. And Deuteronomy 12 prohibits witchcraft. I want to talk to you about the name Jesus. I want to talk to you about the Elohim. I want to talk about the holy people in Israel. How come it is they didn't dress in black and red but only in white? And But one of the things I want to say is that it, it just seems to me that because people are born in all different parts of the world and come from different traditions and different beliefs, sometimes it's hard to believe or to accept that there's only one way. I've seen so many good people from so many different parts of the world, even though they have different beliefs than me or cosmologies, if you will. And... There's a lot of people that feel that the earth is sacred, that water is sacred, that fire is sacred, that wind is sacred, that everything of the earth is sacred. And I can connect with that. 
but I think 